Hi everyone, Morgan here. So today we're talking about the proper use of a graduated cylinder. Now this is a 100 milliliter version and a 25 milliliter version. They come in many other sizes, as small as five and 10 milliliters and as big as one and two liters, okay? These are the two common sizes that we keep in our lab stations. Now, please always remember that these plastic rings that are on a graduated cylinder are a shock absorber. Always keep them up at the top, and then if this gets knocked over, it helps to prevent breakage, or when you are storing them, and always store them laying down, not standing up, it helps to keep the glass from hitting the surface, and they don't break as often, because they're pretty expensive. Now, when you pour liquid into here, sometimes people use a funnel, okay? You will get water, as an example, forming what is called a meniscus. That is a curve to the liquid. And you see this sometimes even at home in drinking glasses or in a straw. The glass is polar, water is polar. So there are some forces in there, the result of what's called hydrogen bonding, that causes the water to inch its way up on either side of the glass too. Now, this is what it would look like to you. You would see a curve going down. Okay, the red line represents what the water would be looking like. The blue is the graduated cylinder. So how do you read this? Well, you see the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then between the 10 and the 15, there are four lines. So that would be 11, 12, 13, 14. You get the idea. Now, when you want to look at that, you need to be looking at it straight on. So what often happens with these graduated cylinders is you will find yourself getting down on one knee and looking at the liquids straight on, okay? Now, for this, we read from the bottom of the meniscus. So here it's hitting at 24, but that curves down, so it looks to be hitting at just about the 23. It is possible that if that comes, falls between two lines, you can estimate, estimate a half milliliter. So this is looking like it is 23 milliliters. And if I got up closer on an actual piece of glassware, I could make sure that it was 23 and not 23.5 but this one looks like it's pretty solidly falling on 23. And the unit for these is typically milliliters, the same thing as a cubic centimeter. And when I look at this graduated cylinder, what I will see is that it says ML, and that indicates we are measuring in milliliters. For the very large graduated cylinders, okay, it might be a different unit, but that's not likely. Okay, so that is your basic use of a graduated cylinder. Thanks for tuning in. This is Morgan signing off.